Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the last session of our uh, Winter School. And we're going to have uh, Rosario Genaro again. Uh, he's going to start by continuing his uh, talk from yesterday about discrete log uh, uh, threshold signatures. And then we'll move on to RSA-based signatures and quantum secure uh, signatures. And Rosario, stay is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Benny. Thank you again for having me. Um, so um, yesterday, if, if you guys remember, we had uh, ended talking about the uh, state of the art in terms of threshold Schnorr signatures. We had covered DSA, we had covered BLS, and we covered Schnorr. And this is a scheme where you assume dishonest majority, and the proof is by reduction, not by simulation, meaning that um, <clears throat> in the protocol, the adversary can bias some of the nonces and the keys that, um, that, that are generated by the protocol, but it doesn't really matter because with a board and we, we are able in any case to prove that if the protocol doesn't abort, the protocol is unforgeable. So um, what I wanted to... Um, talk a little bit, the, the last thing that I wanted to discuss about that's the log-based schemes is that what's really challenging and is the, the design of a good, and I'll talk about what good means in a minute, DKG protocol. Uh, remember, a DKG protocol is a protocol that established a random secret, which is shared among the players, and the corresponding public key, so if the secret is X, the corresponding G to the X is public uh, to be used as a public key or as a public nonce in a generation of a signature like RSA or Schnorr. So the DKG protocol that we have talked so far had many drawbacks that prevent their implementation in large scale networks. Uh, the first one is that they require like a synchronous network, the, at least the ones that I described. They have quadratic communication, not only quadratic communication in terms of uh, communication exchanges private between the players, but also quadratic communication in the uh, public channel that everybody has to listen to. Um, so that's because every player sends out information that is linear in the size of the network and requires several rounds to, to, to end in order to resolve complaints, especially if you don't want to abort, especially if you want the, the protocol to have a successful termination. Um, so the, the open problem is to <clears throat> design a truly scalable DKG. And let me give you a couple of slides on some of the progress that has been made in this, um, on this area. So if you remember in the Feldman VSS and the Pedersen VSS, the parties check that their shares match the public commitments to the polynomial through a process of evaluation in the exponent. And then if those, uh, if those values don't match, um, then there is a, another, either on the board or there's additional communication rounds that are used to, to lodge a complaint, say, hi, my share doesn't fit into the committed polynomial, and then the dealer has a chance to resolve that complaint. So there is a, there is a notion of what we call publicly verifiable secret sharing, which says that it possible to verify that the sharing has been performed correctly by everybody, not by the players individually checking that their shares are um, um, individually lying on the, on the committed polynomial. And the way to do this, one general <clears throat> uh, paradigm to do this is to use Feldman VSS. So you do a secret sharing, then you do Feldman's VSS. And the only reason you do Feldman VSS is to have the public value G to the X public and the, the commitment to the local share, the G to the X size. 
but then the shares are are not sent through a private channel, which in any case it's very difficult to uh, to actually assume. But in reality, what happens is that the dealer encrypts the shares privately to each party with with a key that each party owns. So the dealer chooses a secret, commits to the polynomial, to the sharing polynomial with Feldman VSS, and then encrypts every individual share with a public key that belongs to the, to the, to the individual player. At this point, what, what the dealer can do is a massive zero knowledge proof that if you were able to decrypt the shares, then you would see that they lie on the polynomial uniquely defined by the Feldman VSS commitment. This becomes a publicly verifiable um, VSS because anybody can check that every player received the correct shares. So this is actually not that difficult to do, and here everything that I'm talking about now is relative in what I mean by efficient but difficult. And <clears throat> if you use Payet's encryption, because by using the additively homomorphic properties of Payet's encryption, the zero knowledge proofs right here are actually somewhat more um, efficient to build. And, and this gives you a publicly verifiable um, um, VSS, which however still requires a quadratic communication because the, the amount of information that every player reveals is still very large. So now, um, so this is so, and this is the reference to how to do this with a with Payet's encryption. Another recent work, and this is work from last year at Eurocrypt, is a really interesting idea to use aggregation, which, what do I mean by that? So if the, ver the VSS is publicly verifiable, and an example of that is the one that I showed you in the previous slides, then it's not necessary that I, every party sends their VSS out to everybody else so that everybody else can verify it. What we can do is instead of broadcasting, we can gossip our VSS to a small set of neighbors around us. And then this gossip somehow um, keeps going around uh, the network. But when you, when you re-gossip the information that you received, you don't re-gossip everything, but you aggregate the um, VSSs that you received. And now you're saying, okay, I received the VSS for party five, seven, and nine. I am not going to re-gossip the individual VSS, but I verify that they're correct. And I can do that because they're publicly verifiable. So I can verify that they're correct for everybody, not just for me. And then I aggregate, and what I gossip back out is this is a compounded VSS that includes the contribution of five, seven, and nine. And at that point, as all these gossips keep, keep getting larger and larger, you eventually end up with the aggregation of all the VSSs. And what's really interesting about this approach is that this um, heals a, a pretty large reduction in the communication between the parties. Um, the unfortunate uh, drawback is that they were able to construct such a DKG where the secret key, uh, the only way that they were using to, that they were able to build this aggregation property was to create a DKG where the secret key is a group element, not a field element. And this, is, uh, this happens in groups with bilinear maps where your secret key is a group element in the uh, source group, and then your public key is a group element in the target group. And because the Balina map is a one-way operation, then this, this works as a secret public key pair. Um, so what, what this builds is a DKG 
which is unfortunately not usable for signature schemes that we know in uh, uh, that we use and know in practice, like, like such, a, such a DSA or Schnorr or BLS, because in, for those we really need a DKG where the secret key is a group element. Um, but they are able to build a threshold verifiable unpredictable function, which you can think of it as a unique signature, um, which, you know, if you're willing to depart from the use of standard signature schemes, depending on your application, if you're building an application from scratch and you're not necessarily bound to use Schnorr, you're not bound to use DSA, you can just put this, a new signature scheme in there um, and hopefully you're not going to have any com backwards compatibility uh, uh, problems with legacy schemes that use those old signature schemes. But in this kind of limited applications where we can deploy something new, this is a very interesting contribution. And by the way, this is the paper that if I remember yesterday, I mentioned that one of the topics of yesterday was this difference between proof by simulations and proof by reduction, right? And if I remember, I told you that in our old paper, we 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 said, well, you know, the old Pedersen DKG allows you to do proof by reduction for Schnorr, but doesn't allow you to do proof by simulation for Schnorr or DSA or any scheme where you want to do proof by simulation. And we stopped at that. And we never really sort of formally define what do you need from a DKG to have proof by reductions. And this paper actually did a pretty good job at the sort of formally define what are the properties of the DKG that you need to, um, um, to obtain a proof by reduction on schemes that do have a reduction for unfortunately. Okay, um, and the last one, and this is the one that I'm most um, somehow interested in, uh, the some that has been sort of occupying my mind for a while, is that if you can think of Feldman VSS as an example of a polynomial commitment, what, what the dealer is doing is by publishing this values right here, is it's really committing to the coefficients of the entire polynomial, okay? And you can say the same thing with Patterson, right? And then this commitment right here allows you to efficiently verify that you received a good point on the polynomial. And why? Because you can do evaluation in the exponent and then it's gonna tell you this value right here is the correct evaluation of f at i, um, because if I put I in the exponent on this uh, exponentiated uh, coefficients, I'll get G to the Xi. So, so it's a commitment where you can open, you can think of it as a commitment to a polynomial, where I, uh, the opening is not to the entire polynomial, but the opening is to a particular point uh, with a proof that this particular point is correct. The evaluation of this point is correct. And the, of course, the reason the KG has quadratic communication is that the size of this commitment is as big as the polynomial itself, right? And so the question is, is there a way to commit to a polynomial with a shorter string. And what I mean the, the, the a shorter string, I mean both the commitment to the polynomial and the proof that this value is correct, which in the in the Feldman's commit in the Feldman's commitment is the same thing. It's just the the vector of exponentiated commitment, uh, this vector of exponentiated coefficients. In, in that case that serves both at the, as the commitment to the polynomial and proof. Is there a way to commit to a polynomial where the commitment and the proof of correctness are both strong, uh, short? And by short, I mean sublinear in the, in the polynomial, ideally constant, right? And in fact, 
we do have a polynomial commitment um, where the, this public commitment and the proof of correctness are actually constant size. However, they require a trusted setup. And for those of you who don't know, this is a beautiful paper by Kata and Al, where they use bilinear maps and the divisibility property for of uh, polynomials to show that um, you can commit to a polynomial with a single value and you can prove uh, the correctness of the polynomial uh, evaluated at a certain point with, I think, one value as well. So with just one group element. This gives you a VSS, which has much reduced communication, but it does require this trusted setup, which, by the way, has linear size in the size of the polynomial as well. So the interesting thing right here is that polynomial commitments have become incredibly important. Uh, this succinct polynomial commitment with sublinear um, parameters have become really important in, in the construction of SNARKs. And for those of you who don't know SNARKs, they are zero knowledge proofs of the arbitrary statements with uh, small um, communication and ideally also small verification time. Um, and some of these polynomial commitments exist even without trust to set up. Um, they're not constant, but they do avoid the trusted setup. And the reality is that I am not seeing, and here I may not know of some work, and so if somebody knows of any of this work, I'd like to get a reference, but I haven't seen any of these other sublinear non-trusted uh, non setup polynomial commitment who's used them in the context of DKG. Because there too, they could um, substantially reduce the size of the communication between parties. And that I think was the last slide. So uh, I, in, in terms of my target audience, which is, you know, when I designed this, uh, this lectures, in my, my, in my mind, the target audience was graduate students who are getting into our research area. Here is a very interesting open problem in which a lot of people are uh, working on and where any contribution would be really uh, make as the potential of having a great impact. So to improve the efficiency of uh, distributed key generation protocols, um, for example, the, the previous slide, if you could build uh, disaggregatable publicly verifiable DKG, but for field elements, rather than group elements, I think that would be an incredible result and an incredible contribution. So, um, or if you could show how to build DKGs using sublinear polynomial commitments without trust setup, that would also be uh, very, very interesting. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Yeah. And uh, we'll be back in 15 minutes.